This is Ben Shalom and you're watching Sporting Icons. All right, everybody. Hope you're all doing fantastic. So the IBF have released their new rankings literally only about an hour ago, hence this particular video. Now, they have made some pretty big and important changes. And I'll go through what the changes are and why they are important for the heavyweight division landscape going forward. Anyway, so if you are new to this channel, firstly, welcome. Thank you very much for watching. Please click that subscribe button if you haven't already. I much appreciated. Now, the new top 15 goes as such. Alexander Usyk is the IBF World Heavyweight Champion. He's, he's unified champion, of course, with the IBO, Ring Magazine, WBO and WBA. Number one. Philip Herkovich. Number two, Otto Wallin. We're going to talk about that in a second. Number three, Anthony Joshua. Number four, Deontay Wilder. Number five, Frank Sanchez. Number six, Joseph Parker. Number seven, Jared Anderson. Number eight, Dan Dubois. Number nine, Asha Kabiel. Number 10, Arsene Bek Makhmadov. Number 11, Dillian White. Number 12, Mike Bacoli. Number 13, F.A. Jagba. Number 14, Marek Gassiev. And number 15, Fabio Wardley. There you have it. That is a new top 15 from the IBF for the month of October. So firstly, before we talk about their new rankings and what's changed around, let's see who has been dropped this month. Well, two people have been released from the IBF, Andy Ruiz Jr. and Luis Ortiz. Now, Luis Ortiz is no longer on anybody's top 15 rankings. Nobody's now. The IBF was his last hold, if you like, and even the Ring Magazine dropped him as well, hence the quite recent video. Go check out that one. So, reasons for Andrews Jr. and Luis Ortiz being dropped. Last time both of them fought was against each other. That was in was it September of last year. So, it's over a year now. That could be one of the reasons. Um, Andrews Jr., of course, he's been dropped from another couple of sanctioning bodies as well. In fact, uh, um, I think he's only really hanging on to a WBC and WBO now. That's pretty much it. He's been dropped from the Ring Magazine the, and the WBA and now the IBF. So is there something going on that we're not privy to? Could it just be inactivity? It might be. It might be. But if that's the case, then next month, John Tay Wilder will be dropped, won't he? Because he only fought one month apart from Andy Ruiz Jr. and Luis Ortiz. So it's going to be interesting to see what the rankings hold next month if Deontay Wilder has been dropped by any of them. So if he hasn't, then it's going to probably lead me to suspect that it's either a case of the sanctioning bodies are not confident that Luis Ortiz and Andy Ruiz Jr. want to fight anybody with a heartbeat. Or something more, should I say, sinister is going on. Could it be that they're on some kind of secret ban? Not suggesting it, just asking the question. Are they on some kind of ban that we don't know about? As we know, quite some time ago, as it was reported by Victor Conte, that Al Heyman had asked, the, had asked Vada to not release any information and only tell him about any kind of tests. I'm not saying that this is the scenario. I'm saying, is it a possibility that it could be? You never know. I think it's worth uh, investigating. Um, anyway, so Andy Rich Jr., Luis Ortiz have been dropped. Okay, so fresh inserts. Let's start with them before we start talking about recent fights and, of course, some big news that is definitely coming. Okay, so fresh insert number 15, Fabio Wardley. He's the British heavyweight champion and he will be fighting for a version of the WBA strap, I think it is, against David Adelaide. And that will be at the end of this month on the Tyson Fury Francis in Ghanu undercard in Saudi Arabia. So that's a good fight. That's a fight that um, I really, really want to see. It's probably the best fight in the card, if, um, if we're being honest. Um, now, the British Boxing Board of Control did order Fabio Wardley versus David Adelaide to fight for the British Heavyweight Championship. So this was a, actually a mandated fight, but the British Boxing Board of Control are not allowing that belt on the line for this particular fight. I can only put it down to, is it because it's in Saudi Arabia and not on British soil? Some people will say, yeah, fair enough. Other people will say, well, that's just ridiculous. It shouldn't matter where you fight. Anyway, it is what it is. So Fabio Wardley in at number 15. Number 13, F.A. Ejagba is also a fresh insert. He's only got one loss into his record. That was a points loss to Frank Sanchez. Quite some time ago, that was on the Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder undercard. So quite some time ago, I think it was their third fight, wasn't it? So 
quite a while ago. And he hasn't really beaten anyone great. I mean, you could say Kosobuski. He does officially have him on his record after Kosobuski hit him low one too many times and the referee stopped the fight. Kosobuski deliberately done it, okay? But it, he has announced another fight that is coming up. I forget what date, but um, it ain't too far away. And it's good that he's keeping active. I forgot the name of the opponent as well. I did try to avoid it. But either way, um, he is keeping active. So that's a good reason to rank him. Activity, I think, is very important. So FA Jagba in at number 13. Number eight, Dan Dubois is also a fresh insert. And otherwise, he wasn't there before, but now he is. Of course, he wasn't ranked before by any of the other sanctioned bodies other than the WBA because he was WBA regular world heavyweight champion. Okay, but because he got his mandated shot against Alexander Usyk, now he no longer holds that title, so now he's free to be ranked wherever, and the IBF see fit to put him in at number eight. Is that right? I mean, considering he has been stopped twice, he's been stopped by Joe Joyce, who's not in these rankings, and he's been stopped by Alexander Usyk. So it is a little weird that they would put him in at number eight. Is Queen, are Queensbury pulling some kind of strings? Maybe, maybe, we don't know. But either way, he's in at number eight. And of course, the biggest one is number two, Otto Wallin. Now, last month, Otto Wallin was number nine. Now he's number two because he defeated Murat Gassiev. Murat Gassiev was number 12 last time. Now Murat Gassiev is number 14. But Otto Wallin, he got that win. Some people agree with it. Some people don't. It was a split decision. However, but... Because of this, this was a WBA version of the title for a mandatory, a secondary mandatory position for the number two that has been vacant for quite some time. I don't get why the IBF do these vacant positions, but anyway, they did. And because Wallin defeated Gassiev, he got the number two position, which means the knock-on effect of this one is that with the recent IBF order to uh, Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk, most notably um, Alexander Usyk because he's IBF champion, that the winner of their undisputed fight must fight Filip Herkovic next. But as we're hearing that they've got a rematch clause both ways, the winner of their undisputed fight is going to get stripped of the IBF. That means Filip Herkovic will fight for the vacant IBF world title against currently Otto Wallin. So whereas before today... It was going to be Herkovich versus Joshua. Now it's Herkovich versus Wallin. That's how it's going to be. Okay. So that is probably the biggest story as far as these new rankings are concerned. That Herkovich versus Wallin for the vacant IBF title. If the Fury and Usyk fight firstly goes ahead. If it doesn't, then of course Usyk has to, has to defend against uh, Filip Herkovich next. But if it does... For undisputed, the winner of that fight must fight Herkovic. But as we're hearing, a two-sided rematch, which means the belt will then be stripped for that rematch. Herkovic will fight for the vacant one, currently against Otto Wallin, in a nutshell. Okay, now, other than that, there's only a couple of changes here and there. I've already mentioned about Gassiev has dropped down a couple of positions. Martin Bacoli's been moved up one position. Martin Bacoli is, of course, going to be taking on Carlos Takam. Carlos Takam is, of course, not in these rankings. Of course, he's not. Martin Bacoli wouldn't fight anybody in, the, in anybody's top 15 of the rankings, right? Is what it is. But he's been moved up a position and his fight with Carlos Takan will take place on, the, again, the Fury and Garnu undercard at the end of the month. Personally, he should be fighting Makhmadov, who is number 10 in these rankings here. And he's, he's ranked highly across all other sanctioned bodies where Makhmadov is actually on the same card as Bacoli versus Takam on the Fury and Garnu undercard. So that will be a better fight, in my opinion. Um, Azure Cabiel has been dropped down one position from number eight to number nine. Obviously, because Dan Dubois has been freshly inserted into the number eight position. But Cabiel is the European heavyweight champion. He's still undefeated, but his best win is Derek Chisora. How many years ago was that in Monte Carlo, where Derek Chisora turned up without a trainer in his corner and whatever else? Um, Cabiel seems to be one of those kind of opponents so far that doesn't want to risk it. He, he doesn't want to lose his O. It seems that he wants to protect it and just keep on fighting some Euro-level fighters. That's what he wants to do. And face a two-time European heavyweight champion. He got stripped of that title before. Well, I say stripped, he had to vacate it because he was ordered to take on Joe Joyce. Rather than take on Joe Joyce, he vacated it. That kind of tells you the ambition of Asher Cabiel. It does. Um, 
Dillian White, he's been dropped down one position. Again, of course, currently he's going through that uh, Vada PED situation right now, which is why the Ring Magazine dropped him. Okay, again, I've got confirmation of the Ring Magazine that uh, that's why they've done that. But obviously the IBF are holding on until the outcome of that particular case. But other than that, there's no other real changes. So that is the IBF for the month of October. You like them? Do you not like them? For me, they could be a whole lot better. I said there are some fighters out there who should be ranked, but are not. For example, Joe Joyce should be in these rankings. I mean, if Joseph Parker's number six and Dan Dubois number eight, who Dan Dubois knocked out, oh, sorry, who Joe Joyce knocked out both of them, shouldn't he be in there? You would think so, right? Or maybe it's down to sanctioning fees, who knows? Anyway, my thoughts, you drop me yours, click on the subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.